Welcome back Guardians, Profane here, thanks for checking out the video. Today we're checking out an absolutely amazing hunter build that is damn near indestructible. Recently I was encouraged to give the Moth Keepers a try on a strand build, and I have to admit I was pleasantly surprised. This build performed tremendously well at every level of difficulty, and I think it honestly works best when you have teammates, because this might be the most incredible support build that hunters have the option of. You'll have a complete arsenal of autonomous minions to track down and decimate your enemies with. You'll be able to tear through any group of enemies and any champion while also having a reliable means of safeguarding yourself and teammates. So if you're looking for a great hunter build that's going to keep you alive under the toughest of environments, then you have come to the right place. This combination of the Moth Keepers with the Threadrunner will be a great option when taking on Legendary or Master Law sectors, Grandmasters, Dungeons, Raids, and even the new Onslaught activity that will be coming out here soon. So let's get to dissecting this build, starting with the Moth Keepers. This exotic provides hunters with the Winged Eclipse intrinsic trait, which can be used on any subclass, but you'll find some unique synergy when it's used with Strand. This takes away your standard grenade option, and it replaces it with two charges of mothballs. When you throw one of these mothballs, two little moths will break out, kind of like a pokeball. The moth keepers will also reduce the base cooldown of each grenade charge, allowing you to charge up these mothballs much faster than you would with a standard grenade. These moths are going to do one of two things, and it's completely based on your real-time scenario. When the ball breaks, you'll either create purple void moths or blue arc moths. Moths that spawn near enemies will be blue, and those that spawn near you or allies will be purple. Arc moths will track down enemies, detonating into an arc explosion that blinds any enemy within 4 meters, which also stuns unstoppable champions. This is actually going to be our primary source of stunning those champions. While those enemies are disoriented from the blinding effects, they will be temporarily unable to fight back, which could really help out if you get swamped by a big group of enemies, or if you're going up against bigger, tougher, yellow bar enemies. And since these mods are replacing your grenade functionality, they will trigger armor mods like firepower and ashes to assets. If the mothball lands in an area that only contains enemies, then two arc moths will spawn instead of one with both having the ability of detonating and blinding enemies. The purple ones will quickly travel to you or an ally and will grant a Void Overshield, valued at 22.5 hit points. That's about half of what a standard Void Overshield would provide, but in an instance when you or a teammate is at critical health or trying to res a teammate who's in a bad spot, that 22.5 point shield is really going to be a lifesaver. And when you throw those mothballs when no enemies are near, then only void ones are going to spawn. And a really nice benefit about this is that each one of these moths can stack on top of the others, meaning that you could receive up to a 45 point void overshield. And with how we have the rest of our build set up, you're going to have a never ending supply of these moths, giving you and your team a constant dose of these overshields. So if it hasn't become obvious enough already, this exotic provides a ton of versatility within your gameplay, as they can be used offensively or defensively. And it's worth pointing out that even though we will have woven mail, these void overshields won't override any act of woven mail, so we'll be able to enjoy the benefits of both resistance bonuses. And since we won't be able to always have woven mail, those void overshields will be a perfect supplement. Now that we know what the Moth Keepers are going to do for us, let's talk about how we have our Threadrunner class tree set up. We've got the Widow's Silk aspect, so this is going to grant us an additional grenade charge. And since we are using Moth Keepers, which provides us with two charges, we'll actually have three total Mothball charges. We are sacrificing our grenade ability for these Mothballs, so to serve as a perfect substitute, we're using the Whirling Maelstrom. This is going to give us another autonomous weapon that's going to spin around inflicting a ton of damage to nearby enemies. 
and most of those enemies should already be blinded, making these bait blades much more effective. When it comes to fragments, we are going with Thread of Warding. This will provide us with a 45% damage resistance bonus whenever we collect an orb. We're also using Thread of Ascent, so whenever we throw our mothball, our equipped weapon will automatically become reloaded. This is a really nice benefit to have when you're trying to deal maximum damage or when you're trying to keep sustained damage onto a champion. We're also using Thread of Generation, which is going to generate a small amount of grenade energy off of each tick of damage. Since we've got our Whirlwind inflicting area damage and our Mothballs, this fragment is going to be working overtime to provide us with an abundance of grenade energy. The last fragment that we're using is Thread of Rebirth. This gives any strained weapon the ability to create Threadlings after final blows, which will give us our third source of an autonomous weapon that's going to hunt down and damage enemies for us. By itself, this isn't going to generate a ton of Threadlings, but we could use strained weapons with a Hatchling trait to produce more of these. And when we start looking at our seasonal artifact, we're going to find several mods that will vastly improve this build's performance, including our Threadling production. We've got Dragon's Bite, so whenever we break an opponent's shield with our strained weapons, they have a chance of becoming suspended, giving us another extension towards managing crowds of enemies. We're also using Unraveling Orbs, which will give our strained weapons the ability of unraveling targets after collecting an orb. Unraveled enemies take continuous damage from tiny little threads of strand, and when these weapons have unraveling rounds, they can also pierce barrier shields. And with the use of Horde Shuttle, whenever we damage unraveled enemies, we'll generate additional threadlings, significantly increasing how many of these little green rats that we'll have running around. Before we dig into the different weapons that you'll want to use with this build, let's take a look at the armor and armor mods that will best facilitate the use of the Moth Keepers. Our main priority when it comes to character stats will be resilience and discipline. Mobility is always nice on a hunter, especially since it recharges our class ability. But if possible, recovery would be a really nice stat to invest into after discipline and resilience. On our helmets, we're using a harmonic siphon mod so that our strained weapons will create orbs giving us woven mail and triggering a few other armor mods. We've also got Ashes to Assets, which is going to get triggered off of the use of the Moth Keepers. We're also using the Firepower mod, which will also get triggered when final blows are performed by our Moths. As it stands, we have three total Mothball charges, and we've got Thread of Generation, which is going to give us a ton of extra grenade energy. But with the use of Grenade Kickstart, we can bump that regeneration up pretty substantially. Grenade Kickstart consumes armor charges whenever we throw a grenade, and it converts those charges into grenade energy. And currently, that's going to give us up to 41% additional grenade energy. We are using Stacks on Stacks and Charged Up, so we'll be able to have more armor charges to get converted whenever Grenade Kickstart does kick in. We'll talk about it more in depth here soon, but I do like including grenade launchers into this build. And with the Blast Radius Artifact mod, we would have another reliable source to fill up those armor charges. Outside of the use of the Charged Up mod, we're mainly running resistance mods on our chest armor. And on our boots, we have the Stacks on Stacks mod, but we also have Innervation and Recuperation, which will both benefit from the creation of orbs. Innervation will give us 10% extra grenade energy on each orb, and Recuperation will give us an additional source of health recovery. On our class item, we're using the Bomber mod, so whenever we perform our dodge near enemies, we'll gain a small amount of grenade energy. With the Reaper mod equipped, we'll create orbs when defeating enemies after using our dodge, which we are using a Marksman dodge, which gives us the ability to maintain sustained damage. And with Powerful Attraction, whenever we dodge, any nearby orbs are going to automatically come to us, helping us keep the benefits of woven mail and fueling our armor charges without having to waste time running around searching for orbs. Not to backpedal too much, but with the use of the Wished Into Being artifact mod, we'll also be able to generate extra orbs with our abilities 
whenever we're close to having our super energy full. All right, with armor and class tree stuff out of the way, let's talk about those weapon loadouts. And our main breadwinner is the Quicksilver Storm. This is an amazing auto rifle that will create additional tangles for us with the use of its grenade launcher mode, which is going to give us more Beyblades, and it even facilitates the ability to have two simultaneously spinning. And since auto rifles get the nod towards overload champions, this will be our main method of stunning those champs. Alternatively, legendary strand weapons that have slice, hatchlings, or demolitionist will be a great option to fit into the primary slot. Our secondary option revolves primarily around the use of the indebted kindness. We have two options to go with. One has volt shot and one has permeability. Sidearms pierce barrier shields this season and with volt shot, we can also stun overloads. But with permeability, we could convert this into a strained weapon to give the indebted kindness all the bonuses that our strained weapons will have. With ammo economy in mind, Having lead from gold on this or any other special weapon would be a really good idea. Our choice in heavy predominantly includes one of two weapons, either the Carax's Distress or the Circular Logic. With either of these weapons, I love the combination of Demolitionist and Hatchlings, as it will synergize really well with all the automated minions that we're already creating. But there's times where we need to be conscious of how much overall damage we're able to apply. And that's when I like to pull out the circular logic with Vorpal and Envious Assassin. With almost 200 rounds that can be charged up plus tiny heat seeking nano rockets, this thing will straight melt champions or bosses. And against the right boss, the Carax's Distress with Surrounded will be an amazing choice. And we can't talk about a build that includes the Moth Keepers without talking about the X Daris. This grenade launcher recently got some tweaks to its performance, and it's actually a lot better now. It'll make us amplified, giving us a nice little speed boost, plus it increases our reload speed. And when we defeat enemies, more moths are going to be created, taking on the same attributes as the ones created from our mothballs. In the end, I find that in the more difficult activities, the Quicksilver Storm is a much more reliable choice. But when I'm running through some lower level activities, the x Daris is a super fun and really effective option. I've taken this build through several in-game activities so far, including some of the more challenging Grandmasters, and this build holds up. It's a great support build, and with so many different ways of attacking your enemies, it's one of the absolute funnest hunter builds that I've had the joy of playing in a very long time. So if you haven't tried the Moth Keepers, or if you just haven't tried them with a strand build, it's about time you do so, because this is one incredibly indestructible build. And with that said, I'd love to hear your thoughts about the Moth Keepers and this Hunter build, so let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you need to make a quick copy of today's build, you can easily do so by visiting the Destiny Item Manager link that's down in the description. Thank you as always for checking out the video, if you enjoyed and found it helpful, then be sure to hit that like button below, along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated, and both really do help support the channel. If you're a new Light Guardian, just starting your journey, or a battle-hardened veteran, just looking for a new home, then be sure to check out the Discord link in the description below, and join one of the greatest communities in all of Destiny. And until next time, Guardians, this has been Profane, wishing you all some happy hunting.